Hello, my name is Cynthia. Welcome to my FlossTube video. If you love beautiful needlework, you love to talk about it, see examples, but most importantly, be inspired to create your own beautiful needlework and handwork, then you're in the right place. Today is Wednesday, October 30th. I'm posting this video on Halloween, but we're gonna be a little bit busy with costumes and my parents are coming in town, so I thought it would be better to do this a day early. I have some finishes that I wanna share, um, one or two that are related to the craft fair that I uh, led at the beginning of this month. We uh, were in a barn that is a member of our churches and it's been converted into a party barn they call it so we had a stock full barn with quilts and jewelry and beautiful handmade floral designs and um, it was just a fantastic affair. We had about 300 people come through, so it was very busy and successful. Um, and I made some money, not a ton, but um, I'm not sure I had the right market for my primitive pieces. But I did want to share some of those finishes, and I might be putting some more on my Instagram for sale. The first one I want to show you is the scarecrow that's sitting behind me. He's about um, three feet high, and he turned out really cute. I didn't actually get to finish him in time for the craft fair because he had multiple steps involved. I think he had like six different parts that I had to attach and paint. And then I made him a jacket and pants and a hat and shoes. So he turned out so cute though. He has um, a crow in his hands that's separate. It kind of comes, well, I think I attached it actually, but it was a separate piece with a little tail. And then he has um, gloves and pants with a patch and I love his um, his straw is falling down I love his little legs because they're black and white striped and I like the um, scarecrows that you can find at like Hobby Lobby and Michaels but I've never been as crazy about their face and this guy actually has if you look at it he has a raggedy and a raggedy Andy if it's a boy a raggedy Andy face so I made this sunflower like the ones I did back in the summer and it's just glued on there so he turned out really cute here he is and he has weight in his um, base I actually used rice <laughs> because I didn't have anything else so he's a sitter he also can hang but I prefer him to sit so he turned out really cute little scarecrow Andy and he was a lot of fun and then I also had um, already posted in my community tab if you saw this um, my autumn ABCs and it's really tall I love the arrangement at the top though it turned out so pretty with the um, pumpkin and the black and white and I like the black and white ribbon you might notice it's not white it's actually ivory um, which is harder to find I think I got that at Hobby Lobby so it matched really well and my mom gave me that I love you to the moon and back flag I think she picked that up at Canton at one of the flea markets and so I stuck that in there just for some fun details. And I have some lace that's kind of hanging down. It was such a long piece that I kind of wanted some tendrils there. And this was a welcome sign from Hobby Lobby. You can tell from the back. I like the way it turned out. It was originally red. And funny thing, my mom bought the same stand in Oklahoma, separate from me, about a week apart. When I got to her house, I said, I just bought that. Three days ago so I really like the way it turned out I took my measure tape and just kind of walked around Hobby Lobby with this piece in mind and um, I hadn't actually even started the autumn when I was working on summer and I had a lot of trouble with the summer one I'm gonna go back to that um, but it was intended for all four pieces if you do it on 32 count or this is 16 count Ada then it fits perfectly on this piece and I don't know, they might put it out again next year. They do that sometimes, repeat pieces. So it kind of has its own stand. That way I can move it around. It doesn't have to hang on the wall. I have plenty of wall space 
in some areas of my home, but like in the kitchen and in the entryway, there's not a lot. So this works well for me. And I think I had shown you all the way up to here. So I just finished the last bit at the top. And it had one piece that was supposed to go like all the way down and I didn't see the point for it. So I didn't put it on there. But I just tea, actually a coffee dyed this Ada with instant coffee. I'm about to hit the chandelier up there. And uh, I like the way the whites show up on it. So I was really happy with that. It's one of the prettiest finishes I've done so far. And I did lace it. I don't know if you can see that detail. It's probably too far away, but I'll insert a picture. Um, it was such a long piece of foam core that I didn't really want to mess with trying to hobble together pieces of sticky board. Um, so I just thought, well, let me try it. Let me see how hard it is. And it was actually easier. I pinned all along the sides to keep it straight. And then I was able to um, kind of position it a little better and lace it. I thought it was easier than sticky board. So just for future reference, I might be lacing more of my pieces. And it definitely kept the corners crisper. I've always had trouble with it getting really bulky and like kind of messy on the corner, but that lacing kept it much nicer. So don't be afraid of lacing. If you haven't tried it yet, I highly encourage you, especially on a long skinny piece. It actually ends up being easier. So that was that finish. And then my last finish, um, no, not last third finish that I want to show. I actually just finished the other day. Um, I had started this um, free piece from Pinterest. I know uh, Lisa Abbey's Needleworks had shown this too. I think that's how I found it. She always has a bunch of freebies that she um, works through and this one was really cute. It gave me a lot of trouble though. I had a hard time counting it. I don't know why. It's not a difficult piece at all. Obviously it's teeny tiny, but I must have set it down like three times just feeling frustrated. And I uh, finally picked it up. I think it was uh, yesterday and finished the last little bit of it. And I made it, oops, right here. Um, this is just a cautionary tale. I had put my seam ripper in a cup with my pins. You can see that on my um, stitching cart if you want to go back and watch that video. You can see the way I've got it all arranged. Well, I had a pen that leaked in the bottom of my pen cup. My seam ripper had green ink on it and I didn't see it. So when I pulled out a stitch that I had mistaken, it got green ink on my fabric. And this is just a tiny piece, so it's not the hugest deal, but I was kind of freaking out because my thought was, what if I had just done that on my giant sampler or one of my big pieces? So note to self, don't keep ink pens anywhere near a seam ripper. <laughs> that needs to be in a separate location. But this was my first pillow finish. It wasn't that hard. Um, I've been sewing probably since junior high. I can't make clothes very well. Um, I've always made curtains and pillows for my home though because of cost. <laughs> so I know how to sew a straight line okay, but I have never finished um, cross stitch. So I didn't end up needing um, interfacing because this Ada, is um, pretty thick and I didn't feel like it needed um, support and then um, I sewed this ribbon and you can see on my Instagram I ended up changing it a little bit it got a little crooked um, this ribbon is I guess polyester so it almost pinches in here because it doesn't have the same stretch as my Ada and my quilting fabric so it almost looks like it's kind of a cinch on the belt <laughs> So I think in the future, I will probably tack on the ribbon instead of trying to sew it in there. I watched a Vana tutorial and that's what she did. She had sewn the ribbon in and it does look nice, um, but this fabric, like I said, was real stretchy and the bow was not. So I think I'll just rethink what kind of ribbon I sew. And I um, sewed a little bow there and it's attached with a black safety pin that I painted. Um, I wanted to make sure that I liked it and then I did so I just left it because the safety pins kind of prim so it's actually filled I've never heard anyone else use this with rice um, it's squishy and it's really firm I use polyfill um, on the corners and back and then I poured a bunch of rice in and adjusted it around so it's real squishy and I know um, 
that rice may not be ideal. I'm not really sure why other than I think it would attract mice, but we don't have mice in our home. Thank goodness we have two cats. So that might be something to consider, but um, it feels really good. So, and it smells like rice. <laughs> so like that finish a lot and um, kind of de demystified some of the um, anxiety I had about making a pillow. So next time I go into it, I'll know a few more tips and I know that I can do it. So super fun. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to show you, I'm kind of segueing into some Christmas whips. I had, um, like I said, made things for the craft fair um, and not all of it sold. So I have plenty to decorate my home. Um, a lot of it did though. This was um, a pattern on Etsy. I um, just sewed up the muslin on the sides and then painted this um, candy cane. And they call it a candy cane poke because it's meant to go into like a flower arrangement. So I have probably about six or eight of these and that's probably what I'll do with them on the top of a lantern. I like that they're not white, they're ivory. Again, with the um, kind of more primitive look, I think they match a little better. So I have quite a few of these. And then this guy, I only got one of um, these made. He's got some thread, sorry, um, from his scarf. But I thought he was really cute. He's just a little primitive penguin. Not something that you see in primitive style very often, but isn't he cute? He has mother of pearl buttons and his um, stomach is felt that I kind of tea dyed with the coffee stain and then I stitched around the edges. And I probably didn't do that stitch correctly, but it stays on. And then he has a little homespun scarf and I needed to kind of pin his arms down a little better. But um, I thought he was so cute. He has these little flipper feet. So there's this guy. And then the last one, um, if you want to stick around at the end, I have a question I'll be giving away. This is just a little, they call them bowl fillers. You can use it to um, kind of stick in a dough bowl or with your cross stitch. He's a real cute companion. And he was super simple and cute. He can also be a snowman. I'll probably be making a few of those. You have to add a little hat. Um, but this one was more simple and he's only painted, so. He's kind of chunky and he's just sewn up the back with a little stitch. So I thought he turned out pretty cute. So if you'd be interested in this, and you may not be, it may not be your style, but if you'd be interested in it, I'll be sending that to someone in the mail. If you want to hang around toward the end, I'll ask a question. So that was the last of my finishes. Um, and I'll segue into whips, but I did have one other Christmas piece while we're on that theme. I found this sleigh at Hobby Lobby and you know we're all about the dough bowls and the ways to um, kind of corral our stitching and I thought that this would be so cute with some Christmas pieces some Christmas pillows but until I get some Christmas pillows stitched I picked up this little pattern on Etsy by Sticks and Stones I'll link it below it's a bell snickel like bowl filler and he's about seven inches tall. So he's gonna sit in here with a Christmas tree and maybe some gingerbread men and some candy canes, some evergreen. I think it's gonna be so cute. So I'll show you that next month. I don't think it'll take too much to whip up, but I just thought I'd show this because it's at Hobby Lobby now and everything's 50% off for Christmas. So I thought that would be good for um, some Christmas collections like different Santas you may have or a little evergreen tree with some um, pillows that you stitch for Christmas. My little penguin might hitch a ride in there too, but I just thought it looked really cute. So that was another little bit of haul, I guess, but it sort of relates to Christmas and to what I'm going to put in there. So I thought I'd show that. My whips that I've been um, working on for Christmas, I told you I was going to start hopefully in time to finish um, some of the pieces before it's too late to display them because this one didn't make it last year. Christmas Rules has been a favorite on Instagram and for me as well. It is um, really long. It's super simple, but it's just tedious because there's 12 blocks and I am mostly done, but um, I ran out of thread. <laughs> so I had to stop um, until I pick up 
actually I did pick it up yesterday but I haven't started stitching yet here it is all done almost kind of just keeps on going and I should have this finished at the um, floss tube next month and then here's the one where I ran out of thread I didn't have any green or blue the last block is blue so here's where it ends but I had um, one other block that I wanted to add so I started in the lettering style of Lizzie Kate this wasn't it's not a block um, I'm going to have a block down there that talks about Jesus so I will show that later I had even considered um, sharing that little chart if I can get it finished so um, or if I can find a way to share it because I, I know how to finish it myself but I'm not sure how to share it I don't have any cross stitch software I'm probably gonna be getting that but I don't have that yet so this is coming along really well and I don't see any problem in finishing that last block is the little hot cocoa um, which is really cute but not very hard and then um, the Jesus block at the bottom so that'll probably have a red line at the bottom and then I'll put this on a piece of board and lace it and have it ready for Christmas so really excited about that one and the other one that I made good progress on was my free Barbara Anna Christmas elf helper and I can link this pattern if anybody wants it. It's if you search for free patterns with Barbara Anna, if you Google free Barbara Anna patterns, this, this website comes up. It's more of her a um, little bit cartoony, but super cute. And for my kids, um, we do elves and candy and peppermints and things in our kitchen. So I thought it would fit right in. And there she is all stitched up. I love the colors of her hat. They looked um, a lot cuter after you stitched them. Of course, that's the way it always is. You think that the um, pattern looks kind of cute, but then when it's actually stitched, it's really cute. And the favorite detail too is that bird, um, I've got a little stray here there, or stray thread, has a um, bunch of packages from his beak with a long stitch there, or just a straight stitch. So he is so cute. And there's a little bear and um, a bag at the bottom there um, that I want to finish up in the next couple weeks. And I'm not going to do this lettering. It's a little bit wonky for me. Um, so, But I do like the message that says, everybody needs a little help. Merry Christmas. So I will put everybody needs a little help, but I'll probably do it in my own lettering. And her boots are purple. They're not showing up super well right now because of the lighting, but she's all finished I changed her shirt a little bit to have white dots instead of yellow and her tights are green and white instead of green and yellow because I liked that better she almost looks like a strawberry shortcake I used to have a ton of those so really happy with how that can is coming out and it's gonna be on a um, white ceiling tin with a big bow so it's gonna be really pretty I should get that done probably before the next um, end of the month update in November so that was my Christmas that I worked on and then I have some samplers I want to show and some haul and some plans to share so I'll show you that next sorry if the lighting is a little bit different and I look a little bit different I had to step out and pick up my daughter at a friend's house so um, things aren't quite the same but it's only been a second to you so you shouldn't mind um, but I wanted to do a few shout outs before I showed the rest of my whips. I was actually able to do a um, meet up with some friends at a Panera to stitch. And Kristen and I met in the spring when I hosted a um, sit and stitch. And uh, we've been trying ever since to get back together. So we finally were able to meet up. And Kristen invited her friend Christine, who has an Etsy shop. Um, she has a ton of patterns and threads and just anything you would need so I'll link uh, Hollis Hands Creates is her um, Etsy store I'll link that down below and I'll also insert a picture here of Christine and Kristen and I at the end of our um, stitching time which you know how it goes we did mostly um, visiting um, and a little bit of stitching. We just had grins from ear to ear. I think we were just so 
please to um, stitch with someone who understands our love for needlework. Our families, you know, kind of nod and smile, but another needleworker really gets it. So we were just thrilled to get to meet and um, we'll probably be meeting again. I'll try to um, announce that if we have a date, but it was a lot of fun. And so I wanted to shout out Kristen as well. Um, she has a new floss tube channel called Blue Bonnets and Whiskey, and she um, has a lot of the same pieces as I do. We love samplers and a lot of the same pieces, so I encourage you to check her out. I'll probably link that below. Um, sorry if I blurred there, uh, but I'll go ahead and link both Christine and Kristen below. And I, again, encourage you to meet up with people on Facebook or um, if you see people in the comments um, that are from the same area, try to connect for a stitching date. It's a lot of fun and it adds a lot of richness to our lives and to our hobby. So I will go ahead and show some of the sampler work that I was able to do. I wanted to do more, um, but I have to remind myself, it's there's no cross stitch police. I'm not getting a grade report card. This is for fun. So I, if I don't make as much progress, I would love to be able to show you all more, but you know, life gets in the way and um, we have a lot going on. So you do the best you can. But this piece is one that I just didn't want to put down. It's All Creatures Great and Small by Barbara Anna. Many of you have seen it. Um, and I put it down for Sampler September because it's not an antique reproduction. Although it is somewhat of a reproduction, Barbara Anna had um, written on this pattern that this was a piece she stitched just kind of freehand, just making it up as she went along, and then she charted it afterwards. So I find that so um, incredible that she was able to do such a beautiful design just kind of freehand. She's so talented. This is almost a page. The end of this bird right here is only half that's where the page ends so I was really hustling to try to get that bull filled in but at least he's outlined and he shouldn't take too much to sorry my cat's making me nervous shouldn't take too much to fill in and um, I had the butterfly there in some different colors than were called for because I switched the symbols but it looks cute so I left it and one thing I've noticed about this piece, um, actually, um, oh, I know her name. It's, it's escaped me though. Gable Stitcher. Um, oh, I cannot remember her first name. I know it. I'll, I'll put it down below. Um, she was pointing out when you stitch with anchor floss that a difference she had noticed, I've never heard anyone else say this, but it's really correct, I think, is the floss is more matte. You've all probably noticed that DMC has quite a bit of shine to it. Um, and the anchor floss is different. It has um, almost more of a muted tone as well. I feel like a lot of the DMC to anchor is, you know, pretty close, but there's just a little bit of a, um, I don't know if it's gray or brown, whatever color they tinted or shade it with. It turns out to be just a little bit more muted and it's definitely more matte. So it's been interesting to stitch with the anchor. I did change that barn to red. The chart calls for a pink color. It's the same pink that's in that flower, in the middle of that flower below the barn. And I really wanted a red barn. So I actually changed the barn to red and I changed the flowers, the um, base of the flowers to red. So that's the only sub I've made. Everything else is the called for anchor. I think there were two anchor floss that we're going to take a while to ship from one, two, three. So I use DMC, but I think it's just like a green and a, um, one other color, but like that sagey green and that sagey blue, um, or gray blue of the lady's skirt. I don't think there's a DMC equivalent. Those are interesting colors. So I encourage you to give anchor a try. This is on 40 count mallow, the cheapest <laughs> fat quarter you can get from one, two, three stitch but I have never stitched on 40 count before this and I'm finding it to go very well. As long as I use my um, magnifying glasses and my, um, which is my readers is what I mean, and my ot light. I wouldn't be able to stitch on this in the car probably or like just take it anywhere, but it is turning out so cute and it's just really, really fun. So 
that one is going really well. The other one that's going pretty well is Mahala Barber. And I didn't stitch where I thought I was gonna stitch on this one. I had intended to um, go up and get to the um, next page, but I wanted to see, I didn't realize there was a cat in the middle of this vine. You can't even see it. And it's not something I saw in the chart either. And I was trying to get to the cat because I wanted to see what that looked like. I was kind of surprised that it was there. And so I went a different direction and then I kind of got distracted by another piece and didn't go any farther. But um, I've got some threads again. You can see where I stopped. I just kind of left my thread trailing. That is such a pretty design. I kind of trailed over here and I started to do, there's an urn, a big urn of flowers. I have got to get back to that right here. In fact, I might stitch on that tonight. And if I have any more progress, I will post it here um, before I post this video. So there's that. Again, it's going to snake all the way up. It's a very big piece, like almost 400 stitches, but I love the way it's turning out. It's very delicate and beautiful. So Mahela Barber, and I saw that, um, what is it with first names today? The um, Gulf Coast Stitcher. Again, I know her name, but I can't remember her name. Um, her first name has that piece on sale for $15 today. So I'll try to link her store as well. I was just watching, I think she's calling it a sidewalk sale. And Mahala Barber was um, one of the ones she had on discount. Quite a good discount too. So I will put that link to her shop. Here's the threads. And I've been seeing a few people use this idea to make um, tags with packing tape and Pinterest cutouts if you haven't seen me mention that in some of my organization videos this is a really fun tip and then the colors like I said they're mostly browns and greens but there's a really pretty red in there and a couple of bright colors so those are so pretty I love that piece um, and then the last one Nope, there's two more. <laughs> the last two that I worked on, I was able to do, there's another tag that I put on the um, project bags as well. The last um, video I posted was another Stitch and Pray, and I talked about um, being free of anxiety and fear. So if that's something you struggle with, um, I just re-listen to those verses. Sometimes it's very comforting to be reminded of um, the peace that God can give. So if you haven't seen that video, I will try to link it in a card somewhere up there. And uh, this is what I stitched while I was doing that stitch and pray. And this is block number four. Um, I had a problem with the thread at the bottom and I need some advice. This checkerboard does not show up in the chart of DMC. I'll show you an example. Block two, this is the, the charted, the same checkerboard. Um, and it was a lot of work. You know, it's every other stitch and then you go back. Um, it's not just solid stitching. It has very subtle um, checks in there, but I just felt like the effort was not worth it. And so I changed the grain that was charted from the, I think it's like Old English medium and Old English dark. I changed it to light and dark. And now I kind of, I'm not as happy with it. I almost feel like it looks kind of 80s. Now the chart, um, if you can see it, it's one of those um, conversions that just doesn't work from MPI silk to DMC. I haven't really experienced that with any other um, part of this chart. Let me see if you can see this detail. It's really dark and my cloud has just covered the sun that I was getting. But these, um, checkerboards at the bottom are dark dark green and like medium green and then the substitution I made to try to get it to show up shows up too well so I'm kind of like now what do I do I've already stitched that twice I stitched it in the colors that did not show any difference at all and then I stitched it in the light and the dark so now 
I don't know if I should go forward. Um, it's the same thread that's up here. So I don't think it's going to be like a super jarring color. The color is in the other pieces of the design, but it's not the way she had converted those NPIs. So if you have any thoughts, let me know. If you think that looks sort of dated or I should rip it out, I might go and buy those NPIs. I know Brenda, um, Handwork Maniac, has done a lot of Hawker and Hollows, and she was right. She said sometimes the DMCs just do not give you the um, right conversion for the MPIs. So I didn't want to spend that money, but if it's a piece that I'm going to have displayed as prominently as I want to and a piece that's going to take me two years, I don't want to be mad at that grass every time I look at it. So I don't know. It's kind of growing on me, but then I also think, is that going to bug me? <laughs> so let me know what you think. But that's the, um, is that the boarding house? Opal's boarding house. So block four, still making progress, still really happy with it, just needing to make some decisions. And I have a lot of the outlining done, so it's more filling, like the sign's almost done, and then this block isn't as hard as block three, not even close. So hope to have that block done by the end of November. And then the last whip I worked on, this really is the last one, was the Birds of a Feather Blackbird design um, bird cell. I'm using um, this piece with Kim Goldman and Becky of Socks for Mums. Becky just did a video yesterday and she's gotten all of the lollipop flowers at the top done and she's a little bit farther along. So it looks really cute. I wanted to get half of this done. I had, oh, my needle's still picking right out. I had um, done that flower and then I had to pick just the outline, but I had to pick it all out because it was too far away from this side element and I realized I really miscounted somehow. This flower is not where it should be. So I had to redo it, but I've been doing more of these motifs along the side. There's lots of little doodads. I don't know what those are. Um, and they don't even line up side to side. It was freaking me out at first. I thought, oh shoot, that flower is higher than the other, but that's the way it's charted. So I imagine that's the way the little girl or whoever did this, we don't have a name on it. Um, had done it so it's a real funky kind of piece but I love it I already have a frame for it I found one that um, I bought years ago that was in my stash of frames and it's gonna fit perfectly in there so I will lace it and frame it hopefully soon so I can send that chart on its way and then um, I had some other things to share real quickly I had one a giveaway from Liz Matthews finally I remember her name um, who is um, Kathy Barrick's daughter. I'm testing myself with names today. And um, she was giving away a couple of charts from The Good Huswife. And um, I know sh that she has a, um, I don't remember her first name, is it Ann Brown? I think that's right. Um, she has an Etsy shop that goes on vacation a lot. So I was able to get this piece, uh, or not this piece, my Elizabeth Easton. Uh, sampler in the summer with no problem but then I went to look for these pieces and her Etsy shop was down a few days ago and maybe back up but Ida May and Ira Ray are so cute and I was so thrilled to win that giveaway I have admired these guys before and I have an, a different way to to stitch these I have it hasn't come together yet my friend Christine that has the Etsy shop is helping me get a specific fabric for it so it's going to be um, kind of different but I'm excited to to do those and excited to have the patterns because I think they're a little bit difficult to find so I will link them though if they are available or I'll link that shop and just check back on it like uh, periodically and they, I think if you favorite the shop you'll get some updates as to whether she's open or not so those were from Liz Matthews and then my friend Annis um, found me at the craft fair and said she'd been looking for me to give me this book. And at first I thought, well, that's not really anything I'd be interested in. But when I looked inside, um, I actually really like these pieces here. My mom's from Mississippi and I'm from Kansas. So I thought that would be so pretty on black. And I'm intimidated by Paula Vaughn. I'm not going to lie. 
but these pieces that one's kind of pretty too don't look terrible and I don't know why I'm saying that because I would probably I think it's 119 by 118 so not huge and I really like those um, patterns on black so I will hang on to this it's not anytime soon that I want to tackle it but I was very grateful that she thought of me I thought that was really nice that was from Hobby Lobby who knows when it was 10 bucks so that was a nice thoughtful thing and then I found um, a couple of things on one two three stitch and one thing on eBay that I picked up this Erica Michaels nativity berry I'd been speaking to a subscriber about it um, I was planning on getting so I'll be stitching this in the next month and hopefully finishing it by Christmas it is super pretty I think I have plans to do like I did last time um, with my I think it was August video I showed my mom's sunflowers that I accompanied with uh, did I say sunflower sunflower berry that I made two other berries out of quilt fabric um, and I'm gonna do the same thing with this I thought that was kind of a cheat to get a nice display in a silver bowl and so I'm looking for um, teal fabric and I went to this fancy interior design store in downtown Fort Worth that I used to pick up uh, sample books. They would sell the upholstery fabric for a dollar. All the different books that were discontinued, they would throw in the back. And I looked everywhere and finally a lady asked me what I was doing. And I said, where's your sample room? And she said, oh, we don't do that anymore. So that plan was kind of foiled. But my next plan is to go to Goodwill. And I've done this a couple times. I did that on my scarecrow, in fact. And I look through the clothing items and if they have something that's teal I'm just kind of my eye can go right to it you know look for something that's kind of teal or a dark blue maybe in like a, a kind of more fancy fabric and I can cut up the shirt his little shirt was a man's flannel shirt that I got for three dollars and it was an extra large so it's a lot of fabric and I, I actually don't need that or want that on this one but I'll use that orange plaid on other stuff so I'm going to head to the Goodwill in the next couple of days and try to find some kind of upholstery fabric or like a jacket or something that's that right color. So that'll be coming soon. And then I also had um, this piece from eBay. Oh no, here's the other one. I was going to say, I usually get two charts if I get something from 123 so that it can travel. Um, not alone. This Lizzie K piece. I thought was really cute and I'm gonna use the same threads that I used on my Christmas rolls and now I've replaced a few so I'll have plenty and just um, have those as kind of coordinating pieces so that's the Mary string and it's just like four dollars or something so I picked that one up and then the last thing that I picked up for a haul I found on eBay and this makes me think of Michelle I used to keep goats I haven't ever talked about that before I don't think I've maybe mentioned that we lived on a farm and that we were in Durant but um, with some acreage but we had donkeys and goats and chicken and ideal Cynthia is a great farmer and gardener but um, real Cynthia not so much so I loved the goats I had so much fun we had about three generations over we kept them for almost five years so it was a fun um, kind of experiment but when I was pregnant with my son or maybe it was my my daughter I was chasing my billy goat who was eating my neighbor's roses and I was like eight months pregnant wearing boots and my Sunday dress with a rake and I thought what am I doing I am NOT a farmer so that was when I put the goats on Craigslist and in Durant, Oklahoma, they are a hot commodity, so they were gone within 24 hours. Um, and I was sad, not for the billy goat, he was a nightmare, but um, I was sad for my weathers and my little um, baby pygmies. They were so sweet. If you spend time with them and hold them, they are just precious. And so this sampler came up on eBay. I had a search for the City Stitcher. I don't believe she's designing anymore, or if it was even, one person I don't know much about it but this was from 1988 and the colors not my favorite they're kind of peach and country blue but I'm gonna do this piece um, 
in the colors of my birds of a feather. So it's going to be a red and turquoise. And I don't know if those goats are showing up. Can you see those goats at the bottom? Those look like Nubians, which I think are what, um, I can't show you the chart, but it's on the back. I think that's what Michelle has. They're more of a dairy goat. And my guys were pygmies, but I'm going to do them in the colors of my goats. I had a black and white one we called Julio because he was the Billy and he was the, you know, all the girls <laughs> I've loved before. And then, um, I had Stella. She was that kind of yellow color, yellow brown. So this will be a memory of my years as a goat, um, keeper <laughs> unsuccessful, but fun. And I'll probably try to do this next spring when I finish some of those other houses I already have out. So no rush on it, but it was $5 and I just love those goats. And I think that almost looks like a, what do they call that when it's the rose, like, is it Bellagio? There's a specialty stitch, but it's not a specialty stitch. It's just rows and rows and rows of color. And I do think that looks pretty cool. I hope it's not too dark for you to see. I'll probably try to insert a picture so you can see those details better. But that was my haul, and that leads me to my last um, bit of business, which is, actually, there's two more bits of business. The last thing I wanted to do, though, was to um, announce the winner of my Scarlet Letter sampler for Sampler September. I purchased this with my birthday sampler and now they're carried at kit and stitcher so you don't have to worry about the shipping anymore for scarlet letter but this one i don't know if she carries it or not the elizabeth page sampler is so pretty it has that red house and the swans and i had 37 people that wanted to stitch the elizabeth page 1804 sampler and the random generator picked linda savage so linda savage I will comment on your comment probably this evening, um, a day before this goes out, and you just need to message me or I'll put my email there for Google. Just email me your address and I will ship this sampler out. It's several pages, but it should fit in a mailer, super easy. So congratulations to Linda Savage and thank you to all the others that um, entered my giveaway for Sampler September. and. I think that will be a beautiful piece. I hope you enjoy it. The other thing I wanted to share, um, I will be, um, I think, doing floss mitts for uh, December. That is a series that some people did last year. I think Donna Ray and um, Jerry from Yankee Creek Stitcher um, had published videos maybe every day or maybe every other day to celebrate the month of December. So. I had several ideas that um, I couldn't get to with my monthly videos and I thought it would be fun to tour a lot of the um, needlework stores that I have around. There are two in my area that are really nice and then also um, I wanted to collaborate with some stitchers I've met that are super talented and I wanted to show some of their work and maybe do some kind of whip parade or just um, interview them to talk to them about their stitching. Um, I want to try to do a Mad Lib with uh, Teresa from Kitten Stitcher, and I'm being kind of shy, so I might work up the courage. I'm gonna I'm gonna meet her later this month um, or later in November. So I have opportunity, but I'm just being kind of shy. So I had a Mad Lib that I wanted to ask her to do with me and film that. That might be kind of funny and um, I'll be meeting her at that sampler class in November, as well as um, Marlene from Stitching by the Lake and her friend Judy in Tulsa. So I'm so excited to go to Tulsa and see Teresa and all the other people at Silver Needle and um, experience my first class. It's not really a retreat, I think it's more of a class. So um, that will be coming and I might announce on my community tab, um, if you have the bell uh, clicked on my channel then it notifies you if I post anything in there and usually I just try to let you know what's coming up or if I needed some feedback on what piece you'd like to see stitched for my stitch and pray just different polls like that um, I'll probably be announcing some of the Flossmas upcoming um, events that will happen so you can be on the lookout for those and I thank you for watching thank you for continuing to be such a support and um, for your kind comments and 
Um, I'm just so grateful to have all of you in my life. And as I usually finish my videos, as it says in Psalm chapter 90, verse 17, May the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands. Have a fantastic November.